When creating or modifying geometry in the new system, you will see these new path and mask knobs. Path knobs are new for nodes that create or import geometry and allow you to specify where imported objects live in Nuke's new scene graph based hierarchy. Mask knobs are new for nodes that modify geometry and allow you to specify which parts of your scene graph you want a node to affect. With the GeoCard, we can see the path knob defaults to parent node name. This is an expression using tokens and allows Nuke to set an artist friendly path so that a unique ID is always created and you don't have to worry about populating this yourself if you don't want to. We'll explore expressions and tokens in greater depth in a later video. If you would like to customize where your geometry lives in your scene graph, you can by simply editing the path to be whatever you want. In this instance, I'll make mine scene one, shot one, background, card one. Now you can see this is updated in the scene graph and allows you greater control over how you manage and work with your scenes. Let's quickly create a second object, like a cube, and name it scene one, shot one, background, cube one. Notice how I can create my cube and connect it directly under the GeoCard node without the need for a merge node. This is new behavior for the new 3D system and makes it much more in line with how Nuke's 2D nodes function. Now that we've set custom paths for our geometry, we can look at how masks work in the new modifier nodes. In the GeoTransform node that we use to move our card, you can see that the mask path defaults to last modified. This expression, again, is an artist-friendly way to say have this node just affect the node that was last modified. So the GeoTransform moves the card and you as an artist don't have to do anything else to see this result. The most technically accurate way to think of last modified is meaning apply the effect to whatever was changed by the previous node. But for simplicity, I like to think of it as just meaning affect the node above this one. You'll notice, however, that if we put the GeoTransform node below GeoCube, that now only the cube has been moved. This differs from classic Nuke's behavior, where everything above a transform Geo node would be moved, so in this instance, both the card and the cube. This is because the last modified expression is telling the GeoTransform node to only affect the node above it. If we want the Nuke classic behavior, then we need to change the mask, and in this case, we simply type forward slash star. This expression essentially says select everything from the root of the scene graph down and therefore we are able to modify all nodes in the chain just like classic nuke. Or we could manually add the cube and card to the mask path by dragging and dropping them from the scene graph or even using the picker and selecting directly in the viewer. The reason we opted for the new last modified behavior by default is because when working with extremely large scale scenes, it can be very detrimental to have a modifier node affect everything all at once. It can be like setting the default of a blur to a thousand and having to wait for it to process. That's a quick introduction to paths and masks. For more information, see the video on advanced masking operations with tokens.